Hey guys, Sarah here with uh, Chicken and Bulldogs Urban Farming. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with my channel, I'm sure many of you are, because I only have 568 subs. Um, I am Sarah. I live in a suburb of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area with my two kids and husband, and uh, sadly down to one chicken. I have a one-year-old Old English Bulldog that runs around here somewhere sometimes. Uh, my husband has a tractor. He owns his own landscaping business, and uh, I've declared myself an urban farm. It's been a minute since I posted my last video. It's been busy with life and all that. Um, and uh, <laughs> I feel so bad for my chicken, Popeye, because it's just her now. And she's very antsy to get outside. So let's, uh, let's let her out and get introduced. Uh, so this is, uh, whoops, come on. I know. This is Popeye. She and, just uh, took a bath. <laughs> she just did take a dust bath. But yeah, this is my... Uh, my favorite. She's a uh, pot pie and uh, she's the last of four that we recently had. Um, over the last year, a few of the other chickens were kind of old and they ended up getting sick and passed away. One from sauerkraut and the other were kind of uh, undetermined. Yep. Uh, but she's actually a really awesome chicken. Very friendly. Why don't you set her down, Kenz? And uh, loves to eat and uh, loves to approach. Whoa, yeah, icky, right? Yeah, she's she's definitely got her own personality here. But today's video is about uh, five th weird facts about chickens that you may not have known. And um, I, it's not just me that helps with my chickens and my bulldogs. It's also my daughter, Mackenzie, my son, Max, and uh, soon to make an appearance, my husband, Justin. I cannot stress enough how much help and support they give me when it comes to uh, helping out with taking care of things. And one chicken may not seem like a whole lot, but at one point we had four. And uh, yeah, it is kind of a lot of work. It is and it isn't. But uh, going back here, five weird facts about chickens that you may not know. All right, number one, Max, what is it? Some chickens in the winter molt and they don't lay eggs. That's right. Uh, chickens can lay eggs and suddenly stop for a variety of reasons. And the most common is that they are molting. So she actually took quite a bit, like pretty much like her whole body molted in phases over the winter and she stopped laying. But if you see these little white specks here, um, these are what's left of the pin feathers. Uh, so pin feathers are kind of like the base of each feather and they hold uh, kind of like a placeholder for the new feathers to go in. I'll show you some past footage here of earlier this winter when she kind of looked like, um, you know, she had chunks of feathers missing and she was pretty upset and sad about it. So what happens when chickens molt, Max? Um, they stop laying eggs and they try, on all of that meat they have, they try to use all of that meat to get more feathers. That's right. So the protein that chickens use to lay eggs gets diverted to uh, growing in those new feathers and that's why they temporarily stop. Number two. Chickens eat mice and other weird things you may not realize. Yes, chickens will actually go after field mice and eat them. They are omnivores. They do like earthworms. They love to eat bugs. That's half what she's looking for right now. We, this is still February, but it kind of looks like the end of March here. And she's super excited about that because she's looking for things like grubs and even ticks. So one of the things you may not realize about chickens is that they will eat all sorts of bugs, including ticks which will help cut down on uh, your chances of Lyme's disease. If you have Lyme's disease in your area, and we do, um, that's something that you're really going to want to, uh, that's something that's probably going to be really beneficial to you because dogs, people, Lyme's disease is awful, often underdiagnosed. It can be a really big deal. And I've got friends that have very, very wooded lots, and uh, they've never had uh, any issues with Lyme disease, and they've got many dogs because the chickens take care of all that for them. So that's, uh, that's one benefit to chickens. Um, they eat those really bad bugs. She knows Kenzie's going inside to get treats. Number three, you may not have been aware of, chickens can't taste spice and spicy food. Uh, and that actually can be to your benefit. This is called sizzling heat. Squirrels can taste the heat, birds don't, and chickens are a type of bird. So when we pour out some sort of treats um, and she doesn't eat it all, the squirrels eat a bite, spit it out, and go running where the water is, and chickens don't taste it. That's right. So we like to throw a scratch out on the ground um, you know, for the, as a supplemental treat for the chickens. 
Uh, the problem is, is we've got a ton of squirrels around and they will come and uh, they will eat the chickens food. Uh, some even go as far as to get inside our run and try to eat the chickens uh, pellets inside, which I'll show you some video footage here of a of a chicken that uh, got caught in the run and couldn't figure out how to get out and um, a got su- that got caught. Yep, I'm sorry, yep. Uh, a squirrel that got caught in our chicken's run turned very panicked and then uh, the chickens uh, kind of scared it and uh, some funny stuff happened. So yeah, I'm mm. sure this would be really nice and spicy if I tried some, but um, Abby, oh, as, as you can I, see. I tried one and, and, it, and I like spit it out because it was really spicy. Yep, so as you can see, so as you can see, uh, Popeye can't taste that. Number four, unlike robins and other birds that fly into your yard, uh, they don't use bird baths with water. Uh, they actually clean themselves with dust and dirt. Uh, this window well is uh, one of our chickens' favorite places to take a dust bath. And uh, to explain how dust baths help chickens stay clean. They don't use water because that freezes them, especially in the winter. Um, to the point their legs fall off, so they use dust baths or dirt baths. Um, when they kick it up, that means they're trying to get in their feathers, so when bugs fly in, um, they'll be like, ah, it's too dusty, then it'll fly back, back out. Um, or sometimes they'll like lightly peck each other and get the bugs out and clean each other. Mm-hmm. Now Pa has to do it to herself, but yeah. Right, so dust baths help kind of choke out um, like mites and pests and things like that. Um, a lot of uh, birds will actually take uh, dust baths and things like that to help them stay clean. So it's very important that you give your chickens access to uh, dust or, or dirt or something dry that they can kick up under their wings and, and clean themselves. And look who decided to grace us with his presence. Five. I'm waiting on you. There's, you gotta, You gotta do number five. There's snow on the ground. I'm still in hibernation. Come on, old we'll go, bear. We'll go 16 hour days so when the snow leaves. All right. What's number five? You remember what that was? Yeah, it's uh, composting in backyard composting. So if you have a family and you eat almost clean plate clubs, but not all the sorts of clean plate clubs, the food scraps will help with backyard composting and reducing, you know, garbage and greenhouse gas, that kind of stuff, and landfills. Uh, part of having chickens is straw. Using your straw in combination with a compost bin, compost area, food scraps, animal waste, and lawn clippings Throw it all back in a compost area, make some good compost, some good black dirt. And if you have pine trees, if you have bare spots in your lawn, it's about the best fertilizer you can get. And it's free. So in the garden, because we have piles of excess straw, we'll also use it for a weed blocker. So instead of filling your garden full of plastic or some sort of fabric, uh, we, we just throw a straw over it and that blocks out the sunlight for the weeds, which reduces the photosynthesis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it, a weed block, natural. It will biodegrade, it will break down over time, but if you're not turning over the compost and stuff like that, it will just kind of sit there and not degrade as fast as a compost pile. Yeah, and this is the straw that we're taking out of the chicken's run and coop, which has manure mixed in. Uh, so that adds an added uh, fertilizer to your vegetable garden. That, that's correct. So the, the added manure is also an ingredient of good compost. So have compost with manure or some sort of black dirt with compost, i.e. that also has, you know, a layer of manure. In low concentrations with a couple chickens, throw it in your garden, not a big deal. If you had a whole entire pig farm, that's something totally different. And then we get into, yes, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Couple chickens, just straw from their run, you're fine. Throw it in your garden, you'll be all right. So by turning over on the straw, we have chickens who kick it up take dirt, pa dirt baths in it. And right now she's trying to get her tan in. Yeah, 
doing good pot. So here's our compost pile that we have in the back corner of our yard. As you can see, there's some nice black dirt forming here. A lot of the straws from the chickens coop and run. Uh, some of it was discarded materials from our vegetable garden that we added last fall. Uh, lawn clippings are in there too. Probably should be better about turning this over. Yeah, um, this, this definitely needs to get turned. Um, in the winter, well, we, we just didn't turn our compost and that's fine. We have two bins. So as this one is biodegrading, we'll start filling that one up and, and switch it around. We also have a tumbler, which will help break stuff down even in the winter, uh, a lot better. But in the, in the summertime, when we're actually making a lot of waste with the, the chickens and all that, we'll come over here, we'll bring the tractor, flip it a couple times, roll it over, and pretty soon all this will start breaking down into nice, beautiful, black compost dirt. Dirty dirt, the dirty kind. Yes. All right, so it definitely takes a team of us to make sure that our chicken, or where it used to be chickens, are well cared for. And uh, we've had chickens for about three years now, and uh, it's be definitely been a learning experience. We've learned a lot in that time, and we'll probably continue to learn more. So make sure to stay tuned, because there's always something going on. Or going, going wrong. At our house, seriously. Bye Cheers, guys. Cheers guys. Put her down. Hates that. <laughs>